spirit of comradeship. We are here in the spirit of solidarity because we cannot continue working in an environment that is that presents an imminent an imminent risk to our health. The Occupation of Safety and Health Act provides that for any employee who feels that their environment presents an imminent risk to their health, they shall vacate that environment until such a point that the employer shall be able to ensure that the environment is safe. That is one of the reasons as to why we are here today because Article 37 of the Constitution of Kenya mandates every responsible Kenyan when they feel that the public offices which are supposed to address are not doing what they are supposed to do to come out, to assemble, to picket, to demonstrate and to present petitions to public offices. We are starting the second week of strike amidst the pandemic. The government does not seem to have any urgency to give a resolution to this. We have seen leaders of the country, instead of offering solutions, asking us to understand and go back and continue working in an environment that is not safe. And we are telling them that patriotism is not suicide. Patriotism is not suicide. suicide. And we are not ready to commit suicide. suicide in a country that does not want to appreciate its own health workers. As we have said before, we are working under a very difficult environment. And we have been saying this since March. Number one, you are not given the right PPE. And I heard the CS Health saying that we are being insincere. And we do not expect such remarks at a time when we are even losing very young medics because of neglect from the same ministry. They have provided guidelines that indicate that if you're in a, somewhere in a consultation room and you're going to see patients with respiratory illnesses, you are supposed to have at a minimum an N95 mask and eye protection in form of goggles or face shield. That is not happening. And that is one of the reasons as to why there are surging numbers of medics who are getting infections then we infect the patients who come to us, they infect the community, we infect our families, and in turn they infect the community. Right now, the super spreaders of COVID-19 are medics because of lack of PPEs. So we are not doing this for ourselves, we are doing this for the sake of the country. And we are saying leaders must provide leadership. Then, as if that is not enough, once you fall sick, you are not covered. When you go to hospital, the CEO of NHIF the other day told us they are only going to cover those in public hospitals. But we cannot get any ICU bed in any public hospital. We have to go to private. So that is telling us that we are actually not covered. And even that cover, is not actually covering some of the staff, like the ones who are on contracts. And then after all that, when you lose your life, there is no compensation to your family. And I want to ask, what are we supposed to understand as medics? We have been told severally that we need to understand. Are we supposed to understand that we should die are we supposed to understand that we have been left to die? Or what are we supposed to, to understand? And that is why we are here today, so that we can exercise our right by going to the Ministry of Health and the Parliament, 
because we presented our petition more than two weeks ago to Parliament, they have not seen a need to call us. So today we are going to ask them what is happening. They are telling us that there is no money. How much money is needed for them to provide a policy directive to exempt our vulnerable health workers? How much money does that piece of paper that you print on cost, how much money does it take to get the PPEs from Kemsa down to the dispensaries? How much money? When you are asking for the risk allowance, it's because we are forced to buy our own PPE. But they cannot appreciate this because they are not in touch with the ground. And I'm saying this because the CSA that we are insincere. I want you, the members of the fourth estate, because there are some counties that are actually forcing the contracted staff to act, go there and see the PPE they have been provided with. They are working with surgical masks, like the ones we are having. When you are working in an OPD, you are going to get an asthmatic patient and the others that you need to nebulize, which is an aerosol-generating procedure, provide some very minute particles that remain suspended on air, sometimes up to eight hours. This type of mask is not going to help us. And that is why the guidelines from the same ministry indicated that you should have an N95. And it's this kind of neglect, together with the rhetoric that has made us say that enough is enough. And we want to inform them, you can run to court and if they ask us to suspend the strike, we will. But we are going to invoke the Occupational Health and Safety Act, and we are going to withdraw all our members until the environment is safe enough for us to be able to go back. Allow me to invite the GS uh, to also address, and then we are going to have the, the Deputy GS uh, from Kenya. <laughs> the people. We are the people. I want to actually emphasize on what the chairman has said and I say that we are not here to celebrate, neither are we here in a manner that we are actually enjoying. We are here because we have been forced to do this. We are here because our life has been threatened. We are here because we want our, our health to be actually prioritized. We are here to speak to the nation and we are here to speak to the leadership to ensure that they can be able to understand the issues that is affecting healthcare workers after the uh, COVID-19 ensued in this country. You are much aware that hardly did we lose any healthcare worker in the first wave. But in the second wave, we have been actually adversely affected. And the reason why is because the health issues, after they announced that they have flattened the curve, they changed their priority to something else. And for us, we feel that our interest is that of health of us as healthcare workers and that of Kenyan that seek services in our public facility. This cannot be too much to ask. This cannot be something that I've seen all the top leadership in this country talking about. And I will start by mentioning, to be specific, some of the statement that has come from our leadership in this country. First is the statement that came from the former leader of, uh, I mean the former P, uh, Prime Minister, who said there is no money to, to, for the healthcare workers, and the healthcare workers must understand. Our question that he must be asked, more, less than uh, three months ago, I saw him saying there is enough money for the country to go on and address other issues, including BBI. And now we are talking of our lives that have been threatened. Our require, what we require is the PPEs. 
What we require is to ensure that we have uh, we have facility designated for healthcare workers. What we require is to ensure that those are in the vulnerable group have been released. What we want is for those who have not been paid for now almost six months to be paid. They have been working. What we want is for us to be motivated by being promoted after failure to promote for over 15 years. What do we want? We want to feel that indeed we are working in a risky environment. We want to see the government appreciating that by prioritizing the issues of health, by ensuring that these people have been paid a commensurating health risk allowance. And if that one is not done, we are also saying we have seen them hiring people for cheap labor on dubious contract. We are only saying that these people not need to be considered to be put on a permanent and pensionable terms. This is not too much to ask. And indeed, we want to say, when you prioritize the issues of health, you cannot fail to understand that we have actually understaffing in the Ministry of Health and those in the county, and we are not enough. And that is why you have seen a number of facilities being closed down after a few of us being infected. Is this too much to ask, Mr. Former Prime Minister? And the same statement came from the chair of the Council of Governors. I have seen him going around the country telling people that using 14 billion during this COVID-19 is not too much for BBI. But is it not very much better to say that using 14 billion to safeguard the life of Kenyans and for the healthcare workers better than BBI, because BBI can be, can be done even in, in the next year. But COVID-19 does not wait. COVID-19 does not wait. COVID-19 is killing us, and we cannot be pushed to, be di to die. The CS says that we are playing politics, that is Motai Kagwe, with the death. But why then? He, does he announce the death every day? We are only...